This program is brought to you by the Partners and Friends of Anthony Trice Ministries. How do you deceive yourself? By not being honest with yourself. Yeah. If you got some issues, just admit it. Yeah. Don't be in denial like you got together. Yeah. So if you got stuff going on in your heart and mind, just admit it to yourself and let God know, Lord, take this stuff out. To the work with Dr. Anthony L. Trice. Look to the person they say, neighbor. neighbor. The power, the power. Of, a seed. of a seed. Amen. Covenant for life now international started with a seed. It started with a thought that God put in my heart years ago, and now it has become a reality. But it started as a Every business is start as a what? A thought. So this morning, I want to talk about the power of a seed or the results of a seed. Start reading in Genesis 8 and 22. Read. While the earth remains. Notice what the Bible says. While the earth remains. Seed time and harvest, uh -huh. cold and heat, Three. summer and winter, uh -huh. day and night shall not cease. Notice what the message translation said, for as long as the earth lasts, go back, planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Now you see there are opposites. Watch this. In order to have a harvest, you got to plant. In order for it to be hot, it has to be cold. In order to have winter, you have to have what? You have to be able to discern what season that you're in. I'm in a season of weeping because I've already went through my season of You cannot have one without the other. Notice, notice what he said. As long as the earth remains, that means as long as we are here on this earth. How many, are we still here? Yeah. He said it will always be seed. Somebody say seed. seed. Time, time. And harvest. And harvest. Listen, listen. You'll never have harvest without having time. And you'll never have time without having seed. And I understand living in the Western society that we live in, we don't understand the agriculture of sowing. If you go to Jerusalem, and my wife had a chance to go, and it's not real updated. And I think they did that on purpose to help you understand how Easterners live. When we went to Jerusalem, and they took us on a tour, and they, it, we, they went us like this to the uh, Mount of Olives, where they had the olive trees. So we was looking at it, and we said, well, what's that? They say those are fruit. And you can relate to what I'm finna say. I thought that John the Baptist ate wild locusts and honey. I thought the wild locusts was an insect. I mean, okay, I discovered it was a fruit. That's just to let you, help you understand how they think. It's hard for us to understand farming because we don't have a lot of farmers. So when he say seed, time, and harvest, he's talking about planting. What we're seeing right here, and we're going to read some more things, that the word seed means the beginning or the source. Mm -hmm. Things will never start without a seed. A woman cannot have a child without a what? Seed. You can't have a business without a what? Seed. Everything, somebody say everything, everything. starts Start. with a seed. With a seed. One, plant, one plant, one water, but God gives the, but everything starts with plant. Watch this. If we understand the principles of seed time and harvest, and how many know that's a principle? We will better understand kingdom principles. Sowing and weeping is a kingdom principle. Somebody said that's a God thing. That's God thing. As well as because everything, whether natural or spiritual, operates by God's system a 
of sowing and weeping. Say neighbor. neighbor. God's system, God system. is sowing and whatsoever. You're gonna weep. Hey, if you sow love, you're gonna. If you make something happen for somebody else, God will make it happen for you. Why does nobody ever do nothing for me? Cause you don't ever do nothing for nobody. I think you get a little bit selfish. Watch this. Seeds are packed with potentials. Listen. You know what's in the apple seed? An apple tree. <laughs> Y'all missed that. What's in the apple seed is an apple tree. You can't tell by looking at an apple seed. As a matter of fact, you don't even know it's an apple seed because it's covered up with an outer shell. <laughs> we don't understand the way to move God is through your giving. Of your time, yes. talent, yes. and your money. So we have not switched systems yet. Some of y'all still on the world system. You trying to play the lottery. You backing it up. Some of y'all still swinging down the pole. You know why? Because you on the wrong system. <laughs> Notice we said, as long as the earth was, Amen. there will always be what? Sowing and weeping is God's mode of operation. Amen. White Castle has a mode of operation. Amen. McDonald's have a mode of operation. Amen. Wendy's have a mode of operation. Amen. Church's Chicken has a mode of operation. Kentucky Fried Chicken, all of them have their own systems. That's why they can be side by side and not operate the same. There's no competition. Won't we tell you why? Because they got their own system. Well, God has his own system. And it's called Soy and Reading. First Kings chapter 3. Let's take a look at this. The power of a seed. All I said like this. The motion of a seed. Seeds. Somebody say seeds. seeds. Puts things into motion. If things are not moving for you. Because you don't have enough seed. In the ground. I told you all some years ago. I went from a drug pusher. To a seed pusher. Yeah. Same principle. Somebody pushing dope, and I'm pushing seeds. Same principle. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that. Same principle. People push dope, you push seeds. Somebody say same principle. Watch this. Start reading in verse 3. Read. And Solomon loved the Lord. The Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. Say neighbor. neighbor. Lovers, lovers are givers. Are you can't be a lover without being a giver. Being a now I'm talking about all, all y'all that's selfish. Uh, all the person you think about is you. Only thing you do so far is you. Me, myself, and I. I want to show you this morning how to become great. Most people that are great is because they are willing to make sacrifices. They said that Michael Jordan after practice shoot 200 free throws after practice. As soon as the championship game was over, LeBron James went in the gym the next day and started working out. Tiger Woods practices golf when he's not playing. Mayweather, I guarantee he's training right now, although he's retired. Oh, y'all missed that. You know why he's training? Because he understands 
that opportunity is going to always come his way and he always had to be prepared. See, most of us ain't getting opportunities. We never prepare. Because we don't believe God going to bless us. We don't believe God going to help us. We don't believe God going to use us. So we sit back and do nothing because we really don't believe that God wants to bless me. That's why the Bible says faith when I work today. If you really believe that God's going to do something for you, you'll be acting in faith right now. That's why the Bible says now faith is. That's the thing that God can really bless me with. I don't even know what he's going to bless me with, but I'm in position. You know what keeps you in position? Preparation. And a lot of us don't believe God, so we never act like we're expecting anything. The key to greatness is sacrifice. If you're not willing to make a sacrifice, you will never be great. So that's what great people have in common. They make sacrifices. How many want to be great? Okay, are you giving up your time, your talent, and your money? That's the key to you making it to the NFL. What you doing? You focus, you don't care what everybody else is doing, you ain't doing it, you focusing on you. I'm prophesying to you. The difference in average people and great people is sacrifice. Let me say it over here. The difference from average norms and people that are great is one word, sacrifice. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to do that somebody else won't do that's going to make you better than them? I'm amazed how some of us just, we just floating through life ain't affecting nobody. Listen, when you heard the name T.D. Jakes, you know what you heard? Household name. Michael Jordan, household name. Tiger Woods, household name. Oprah Winfrey, household name. Why? Because what's the sign, what's attached to their life is greatness. When we say your name, what? When people say Bishop Trice, they either love me or they hate me. <laughs> they love me or hate me. I'm fine with either one. Watch this. Watch this. Read. Walking in the statutes of David his father. Now watch this. The Bible said that Solomon loved God. And not though only did Solomon love God, but God loved Solomon. Solomon is not his real name. That's the name that his mother Bathsheba and David gave to him. Solomon's real name is Jedediah. You know what Jedediah means? Loved of God. And as we read, we're going to see how much God loved Solomon by how much he blessed him. I don't know about you, but I know God loved me. Amen. How do you know? Because he keep blessing me over and over again. And most of us are struggling with do God love me because you're not seeing manifestations. And you know why? Because you ain't sacrificing nothing. So I understand why you struggle. I want to do God love me. And you're saying that because you're broke. I want to do God love me because ain't nothing moving in your life. Everything dead. I was struggling with God loving me too. But when God blessing your life and he's moving and he's orchestrating stuff and he's moving people, he's pulling people down and putting you up when he's turning things around, when he's beating bills, when he's opening doors, when he's canceling debt, when he sent people to help you. That's an expression of God's love for me. So no matter how much you don't like me, it don't matter how much you hate me, it don't matter because God loves me. How do you know God loves me? Because when I wasn't saved, I almost got killed by five times, but he didn't let the devil kill me. That's love. Stuff happened to people around me, but it never happened to me because now I realize that God loved him to me. So that's when you can be confident. You ain't got to be arrogant, but 
you will be confident because you know who you are in Christ. And I've met more insecure people than I have met secure people. Most people you meet, they don't have a clue who they are. Watch this. Read. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. Who are we talking about? Solomon. Only he what? Sacrificed. He did that mean he continued to make sacrifices and burn incense in high places. How do you stay up? You keep making sacrifices. When God elevates you and you stop doing what you was doing before you got there, then you come down. Amen. That's why some people get blessed and they go AWOL. You got a little blessing and we don't see you no more. That's how most people treat God. They get what they want, then you don't see them no more. Read. And the king went to Gibeah. The Bible says, and the king went to Gibeah. This word Gibeah means elevated place. It means high mountain. So that means that Solomon went to a high level in God. And how many know it's another level in God? So I'm amazed at people that got the attitude that they have arrived. God ain't even did nothing yet. <laughs> and you can arrive? Because you got a job. A job? What about your own business? I have arrived because God paid my house. No. What about I'm paying it off? It's amazing. We get to a place where we have a you you oh, you have arrived? You in a little place you think you've done something? And God wanna do something greater? But are you willing to do what it takes to get the greater? Or are you content where you at? Watch this. God can take you to another level of your marriage. But you satisfied. That's why y'all can't get along. One person controlling and the other one just following along. Uh, some of y'all ain't smiled since y'all been in here. Why you here? Like you suck on the limit. Uh, <laughs> read. He went to Gibeon to sacrifice the, there. The Bible says he went to Gibeon purposely to make a sacrifice. What's a sacrifice? When you give up something that you really love. When you when you willing to give something that's close and dear to your heart. Abraham, off of your son Isaac. Here, Lord. We ain't like that. We struggle with God for years to give up the little stuff he wants us to give him. That's why we never progress. We never move forward. Although it's will, God's will that you move forward, that you go to another dimension in him. You Listen, it ain't over. It's more to God than where you at. A lot more. But you cool with working the job. You cool with working for somebody. What about working for yourself? But you don't think like that. Because you've been taught that slave mentality. One thing about this church, you're not going to be comfortable in here. You're going to be stressed and challenged and pulled and tugged. And a lot of folks don't like that. That's why it's a high turnover rate. But 
it was an important investment for Solomon. Wanting to establish his validity as the king of Israel, both through wealth and dedication to the Lord. Listen to this. The burnt offering has to be a male without defects from the herds of animals from the flock. This type of offering is a special type of offering. This ain't something you just get it with, huh, Lord? No, no. This offering has intentions behind it. That's why the Bible says he gave a thousand dollar offering. Why was this a sacrifice? That means that Solomon took a thousand different livestock, killed each one of them, and brought them one at a time, and the smoke ascended up to God as a form of worship. Listen, some offerings demonstrate your worship to God. Worship is more than laying out on the floor. It's more than prostrating yourself. Worship giving is a form of worship. So watch this. He gave a thousand dollar offering. Watch this. Read. In Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. If it don't move you, it will not move God. So as soon as Solomon made this sacrifice, he had an encounter with God. God stepped to his dream and he asked Solomon a question. I know you asking God questions, but have God ever asked you a question? Look what he said, read. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. In other words, Solomon, what you want me to do for you? Most of us are telling God what we want God to do for us. See, this opened up a whole other world to Solomon. He tapped into something. He tapped into something that brought God close to him. You know why? Because he gave God something that was close to him. I ain't talking about no little tithe. Thank God for your tithe. I ain't talking about your offer. This is a sacrificial offer. Yeah. Where God challenged you to give something you never gave before. Yeah. Read. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. Uh huh. According as he has walked before thee in truth. Read. And in righteousness. Uh -huh. And in uprightness of heart with thee. Read. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on this his throne. This word kindness, great kindness, means great favor. Read. As it is this day. Uh huh. And now, O oh Lord my God. Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. He said, I'm still wet behind you. Solomon acknowledged the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. Have God ever did something for you? Or put you in a place and you know what to do? That's a blessing right there. When God do something for me that's bigger than me, that's beyond me. And I have to catch up with what he did. <laughs> And you have to figure it out as you go. <laughs> That's the kind of blessing I want. God, give me so much money that I have to humble myself and say, Jesus. <laughs> Watch this, read. He said, I know not how to go out or come in. He said, I don't know whether I'm going to come. Because I'm a little boy. But you put me on the throne. You put me in a position of authority. You put me in a position to dominate. Read. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen. Read. A great people uh -huh. that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Read. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. God says, Solomon, what you want to do for me? This is what he said. Lord, help me to understand. Help me to comprehend what I'm doing. Read. Standing hard to judge thy people. Help me to discern and to, to, to distinguish when something is good and when something is bad. Read. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? Read. And the speech, it pleased the Lord. It did what? Do you know why this pleased God? Because it wasn't selfish. His motives was right. Watch this. It's impossible to have wisdom knowledge and understanding and stay broke. 
It's impossible to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and stay confused. It's impossible to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and continue to have a bad relationship. It's impossible to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and stay sick. So why am I sick? Why am I broke? Why don't I get along with nobody? Because you don't have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let me say that with a It's impossible to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and stay defeated. What goes along with wealth and power and prestige and fame when God give it to you? Wisdom knowledge and understanding. Let me help you. How many been praying for something? Put your hand out. And it's taking forever to happen. Let me tell you why. It ain't that he ain't gonna give it to you. But before he give it to you, he gonna give you wisdom, knowledge, and, uh, and it seems like he not answering your prayer. He's answering it by taking you through what you're going through because you cannot get certain wisdom without certain experiences. us online at anthonytrice.org and we thank you 
for your continued support.